Grace, mercy, and peace, they are yours tonight. They are gifts to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you remember grade school? For some of you, that may have been a while ago. Maybe you may even remember a one-room schoolhouse. Maybe some of you remember going to grade school right here in this building. No matter where you went to school or how long ago it was, you could probably still close your eyes and remember some of the things back then. I remember my first grade teacher, Mrs. DeLugas. She was a great teacher, and she was a very kind woman, and uh, just really remember her quite fondly. And then there was Miss Minch, my third grade teacher. I had a crush on her. She drove a Camaro, a white Camaro with red stripes. Maybe I was more, had a crush on her car than maybe her, I don't know. But you remember maybe the Dick and Jane Reader, or maybe the Weekly Reader, right, that came out every week and you would read that at your desk. Or maybe you remember the, the border above the chalkboard, and when we mention chalkboards, that kind of dates you, right? the chalkboard where you had those letters of the alphabet either in cursive or in printing, depending on the grade, but you had that border over the chalkboard. All those things we remember. We remember what we remember about that time because that's where it was all taking place. That's where it was happening. Grade school, right? And I'm sure you would agree that just because what we learned there was basic, was elementary. It didn't mean it wasn't important. Today we're going back to the basics. This is an elementary sermon. As we look at the text tonight, may we rejoice in the basic truths. These are not ho-hum truths. These are exciting truths near and dear to us as we thank God for the elementary things that we have in Jesus Christ. Turning to that gospel lesson, John chapter 1, verse 29. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. I don't know if they do nursery rhymes anymore in school, but if I said to you, Mary had a little lamb, you would continue by saying, That's right. And then try this one Mary had a little lamb, his name is Jesus Christ. He came to save the world from sin and give eternal life. That's what we have here in the text tonight. Mary's little lamb. Pretty basic. Pretty elementary. John reveals this little lamb to us. John reveals and introduces us to Jesus, the Lamb of God. And he starts by saying, look, don't miss it. And the excitement that he's here, look. And he talks about this lamb being true man and true God. In verse 30 of the text, it says, This is the one I meant when I said, A man, true man, a man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. What John is saying is, I was born before him, He came after me, but he has surpassed me because he's always been. He's the eternal one, true man, true God. This is God's lamb. The lamb was basic, was elementary to their worship. We see that in in the book of Exodus chapter 12. We have the Passover lamb. We have the daily sacrifice and the lamb there in, in Exodus 29. We have the lamb led to the slaughter in Isaiah 53. 
The lamb was basic, was elementary to their worship in the Old Testament. The lamb, Jesus, is basic, is elementary to our worship today. Look, the lamb of God takes away the sin of the world. The sin of the world. It's elementary. It's basic. We all are infected with the virus of sin. Every single one of us. Not a one of us is excluded from that virus, and it bears itself out in our thoughts, in our words, and in our deeds. And it's really very elementary. It's an elementary truth that we all need Mary's little lamb. We all need Jesus, the Lamb of God. Because an elementary truth is that we cannot take away our sin. All we can do to our sin is add to it. I mean, think of that. That's all we can do is add to our sin. Sure, we try to take it away. We try to take it away by forgetting about it. Surely if we forget about it, if we ignore it, it will just go away. But it doesn't. It doesn't just go away, and it haunts us. We cannot and we do not forget about it. It's always there. Just like you can close your eyes and be back in grade school, we can close our eyes and remember very clearly our sin. We can't take it away by blaming others, although we try, don't we? It's always somebody else's fault for what goes on. We try blaming other people, and and really and truly, that's in our blood, to blame others. I mean, go all the way back to the beginning, and we see that there, right? Right? Adam saying to God, it's the woman you put here with me, right? He not only blames the woman, he blames God. This is all your fault. And the woman comes up and says, it's the serpent. We're always passing the buck. We're always trying to get rid of our sin by passing and blaming someone else. And it just doesn't work. And then we try to take it away by taking it back, right? taking back what we say, what we've done. But we can't take it back because the hurt's still there. And even if we could take it back, where would you go with it? We can't get rid of it. That's an elementary truth. The sin of the world, our sin, it's real. But there's another elementary truth here, something very basic. When you were in grade school and you were in math class and you saw the addition sign, what would you say when you read the math problem? What? Plus, yeah, plus. When you saw the subtraction sign, what would you say when you read the problem with a subtraction sign? Take away. Take away. Folks, look. The Lamb of God who takes away 
the sin of the world. Jesus takes away the sin of the world. And folks, that includes yours. Jesus himself came and was that very Lamb of God, and he can and he does take away our sin. Jesus came and was willing to be our substitute. He was willing to be our sacrifice. The sinless, spotless Lamb of God came and took our dirt, came and took our sin. He took our blame. He took our place. He took our punishment and became the sacrifice of atonement for our sin. He paid for it all. And in him we are forgiven. Folks, let that sink in for you tonight. That elementary truth that through Jesus, through faith in him, all your sin is gone. It's taken away. Now, you may have been barking at that snow today, but look at the color. It's white. It's clean. And dear friends, so are you. Because the Lamb of God takes away the sin of the world. Don't doubt it. You are the object of God's amazing grace. You are the object of his forgiving love. All of it fulfilled in Jesus Christ, our Savior. None of us is beyond the elementary. Sometimes we think we're so smart, we don't need that elementary stuff anymore. Oh my, don't ever kid yourself. None of us is beyond these elementary truths that are ours in Jesus Christ. He is the one who has taken away our sins. It's as simple as three plus one, right? What is three plus one? Three plus one is? Four, yeah. Three plus one is four. Three nails. Three nails plus one cross equals four given. Look down in the gym, it's there. Pretty basic, pretty elementary. Mary had a little lamb. Subtraction, takeaway. It's all pretty elementary. But, folks, it's life changing, it's life giving. Because in Jesus, through the forgiveness of our sins, we have life and salvation in his name. Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Forever and ever, amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all our human understanding keep our hearts and minds in true faith unto Christ Jesus our Savior.